Today, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about iconic equipment here in Rise of Kingdoms. And we're going to be answering the question, did Lilith actually implement something good into Rise of Kingdoms? what's going on guys cheers so as you've probably already seen the iconic equipment update is here in rise of kingdoms already this game ml went out to all players who were able to unlock the iconic equipment system with a little bit of experience and some crystal keys which is cool i mean maybe somebody got something awesome out of those free keys which is nice quick side note you're gonna see a ton of fort rallies in this uh, video and that's because one of the quests to unlock the artists and hammers is to do 12 barbarian and forts so lots of players are doing forts today so just keep that in mind now in just a moment we're going to go over exactly what iconic equipment is what it does where you should be spending your precious iconic crystals and we're going to go over the pros and cons of the whole thing so if that sounds good to you guys drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and click that button now we saw this mail come out a few days ago and there was also an update mail that came out even earlier than that talking about and explaining iconic equipment we talked about it a little bit on the channel already and one of the things that I found uh you know interesting was that they said can iconic crystals be purchased directly now this means a couple of things first of all I saw this and I was immediately skeptical because I was like okay well maybe you won't be able to buy the iconic crystals but perhaps you'll be able to purchase the uh you know the artists and hammers sort of like the uh, archaeology event and that would be sort of your way of just straight up buying the crystal so i i was you know i was being a bit pessimistic in my mind which is why i didn't comment it on a you know in a video but regardless for now it seems to be the case that there is no way to purchase iconic crystals directly which is good that is a good thing so we have to clap for lilith we have to give the credit where credit is due they finally implemented something into the game that you can't just pay for which is like thank you thank you like we need more we need more of that which is great the other thing I want to point out is just the fact that they had to add this in it, it just says so much about their recent uh, development strategy for the game like everybody immediately assumed that you'll be able to buy this and they were like whoa, whoa, whoa wait no 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 it's like the fact that the entire player base was just like oh yeah it's gonna be another pay to win system it's like that's that's a really bad mentality to have your players in right like the fact that all your players think your game is pay to win like that's that's horrible so the fact that they had to answer this means they know that that's that's what players are thinking and they need to fix that quick they need to put more systems in the game that are free to play friendly so that way people don't automatically assume that every update is going to be pay to win because I would say probably 18 out of the past 20 of them have probably been more pay to win friendly than not. So just wanted to comment on this. Uh, it's good that it is not something you can buy, but it's interesting that they had to talk about it anyway, because that just, that's the nature of the game. Okay. So what exactly is iconic equipment? Well, you can see here in the forge that there is a new tab on the top that says iconic. And you can see here, all of the pieces of legendary equipment that you currently own, that you could make iconic. If you meet the requirements of both iconic uh, crystals and gold requirement now you can see over on the right here the attributes that I would get if I make my hope cloak iconic would be infantry base defense plus three plus one so the reason that for me it's plus four is because this hope cloak is talented if I go to something like the gold helm of the eternal empire it's only three now it seems to be the case for all pieces of equipment that three is the magic number that is the amount of base stats you're going to get from making a piece of equipment iconic. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your attributes here, as opposed to the normal way that we discuss attributes, which is in percentages. If you look anywhere in the game, whether it's on equipment here, looking at this 16% infantry defense, or if we take a look at a, you know, a particular commander like Richard, right? You can see the infantry attack is in uh, the form of a percentage, 15% infantry attack, 15% infantry defense and 95% of the time and pretty much 100% of the time up until this moment when we say you gain stats we're talking about this percentage multiplier but obviously if something is a percentage upgrade uh, the effectiveness of that percentage is only as good as whatever base number you're manipulating so if I tell you that you know purchasing a, you know a, a coffee mug is 10 percent off that doesn't tell you how much the coffee mug is it just tells you how much less it is now that there's a discount so that works in inverse when we look at a bonus to attack if your infantry are gaining 15 percent attack well that we don't know how much attack they have because we don't know what that base is and 
The reason that we never really talk about the base stats in this game is because prior to this, there was never really a way to really manipulate them, right? You could obviously go from tier three units to tier four units, right? And that gives you more base stats because as, as you can see here, this tier four unit is going to have more base stats than the tier three unit. And also you could change your civilization, right? Some of these, some of these, uh, you know, special units have different base stats, but for the most part, we never really talk about base stats in rise of kingdoms. Now that I think about it, all of the, uh, research here is also in the form of percentages. So really the only way to, to change those base stats was with a special unit or by increasing the tier of unit you were using. And those aren't really things that you do. I mean, once you get tier five, like that's it, you're done upgrading the base stats and then maybe you change your sieve and that's pretty much it. So all of that to say the iconic equipment system is the first time that we're actually able to manipulate the stats of the actual units. Now there is a limit to this, obviously, because you only have a certain number of uh, pieces of equipment you can put on a primary commander, but it's interesting to know that the amount of stats that the iconic equipment is giving is only relative to what kvk you're in it is not relevant to which tier of unit you're using so if you have a full set of gear all of it is iconic and you're gaining let's say 24 total base stats and that's going to be spread across attack defense health things like that uh, that that your units are going to get 24 additional base stats regardless of troop type so your tier one units are going to get 24 additional base stats and your tier five units are also going to get just 24 additional base stats so technically this has a bigger impact on lower tier troops like you're gaining a higher percentage of stat points for your lower tier units than you would for your higher tier units so that's interesting to note but this isn't going to bridge the gap or anything between tier four and tier five at least not by any meaningful degree it may be by like one percent or maybe half a percent you'll get better trades if you have full iconic gear with t4 versus full iconic gear versus t5 and comparing those results to neither of you being iconic at all uh, i think you'll see the tier four perform slightly better but pretty much negligible so realistically this is still going to be best for tier five units now let's talk about the pros and the cons of this system because this is brand new into the game and lots of times systems come into the game and maybe they're not so great right so let's talk about that right one of the biggest pros that we've already discussed here is that you cannot purchase iconic crystals from any bundle or any way shape or form or anything like that okay there's no way to trade dollars for iconic crystals which means that as long as you are a player that is going through and doing the artisan forge quests every time that this event comes around and who knows how often this is going to come around maybe it'll come around every kvk and the only reason that's here now is because it's new and maybe they just gave it to everybody uh, maybe this event is going to be extremely rare and it's only going to come around once a year i don't know we don't know okay but besides this the only other way to get those crystals is by going through and doing well in the lost canyon now obviously right the players with the better equipment and better commanders are already going to be doing better in lost canyon so therefore they're going to be able to gain iconic crystals a little bit faster from the lost canyon shop just by nature of their accounts being better right so that's one thing to note but regardless i think it's still a huge pro and a big plus that this system has been introduced with no way to fast track the progress by spending money so lilith thank you i really appreciate when they implement systems like this that are good for everybody in the same way across the board and you can bet if they change this i'll be the first person to make a video about it now the other good thing about the iconic uh, system is that this gives you something to work towards right this is a new event that is meaningful right these stats are going to be meaningful in the long run as a micro opt optimization for your account and your commanders and your equipment and all that stuff so this is good right this this gives something new for players to work towards if they're older players if they've been in the game for a long time and it also doesn't give them a huge advantage over players that are new in the game because if you migrate back to season two or three of kvk your iconics uh status is a little bit weaker right so it's it, it's pretty much good across the board for all players and it also gives more value to equipment that you've already produced right like i've had my eternal knight here for a long time i don't think about this piece of equipment at all i just slap it on my march and we're good to go now there's a new thing that i can work towards to make this piece of equipment even better and it's not going to be 
luck based like the refinement system now i know there's a way to you know guarantee getting the special talent and that just takes time but that's something you could spend money on and i'm not that interested in that you know i just realized that when you go from the forge or the refine tab over to the iconic tab you see these little you see these hooks show up i wonder what that's all about that's kind of cool i didn't even notice that it's not there for the dismantle screen either it's only there for iconic i wonder what that means but anyway having something to work towards for older equipment is good right this means that the effort you put in to get these pieces of equipment over time and accumulate them over time well now you get a little bit more out of it because you can further increase that piece of equipment so that's all good and all of that is great for the iconic system and overall i think that's that's all pretty positive i think this is probably a net positive system for the game which you guys know i'm the first one to tell you when a system is bs or when it's not good for the longevity of the game i think in general this is probably pretty decent i mean honestly we have to wait and see obviously the system just came out we have to do testing and see how you know an iconic garrison versus a non-iconic rally perform and vice versa um, so we'll have to wait and see but in general it seems like this is a pretty mellow change that is generally good now it's not to say that there aren't cons to this system of course um one of the biggest cons is that this only works for legendary equipment now if they gave you the option to make a epic piece of equipment iconic um then most players probably still wouldn't do it right they probably still wouldn't do it because you would get the most bang for your buck by just saving it for you know the legendary pieces right because you're ultimately going to be using legendary pieces at the end of the day in the long run right so it makes sense but the downside of that is is that most players that are free to play or low spenders aren't going to have that many pieces of legendary equipment they're just they're just not right now if you're an older player maybe that's not so much the case uh, but for example you know if we take a look at this artisan forge event um if I do all of these quests for the next few days then I can get four of these iconic crystals which means as long as I have enough gold in theory I should be able to make four of these pieces of equipment iconic right out of the gate now what does that mean well that means that almost half of my pieces of equipment are going to be iconic already so moving forward obviously I'll continue to work on the rest of them and afterwards I'll probably just be obtaining iconic crystals maybe at the same rate or faster than I'll be obtaining new pieces of legendary equipment so the reason that this is a con right all that to say the reason this is a con is because this system still at the end of the day is really going to be more beneficial to people who have more pieces of legendary equipment and that is you know pay to win players uh, the other thing that I think is a little bit of a con for this system is that it's another way to manipulate your equipment uh and adding more systems into the game and layering systems on top of each other just historically has been bad for the new player experience right a new player who comes into rise of kingdoms not only has to understand the nuances between a primary commander and a secondary commander you know the fact that equipment only works on primaries and talents only work on primaries right but the commander view doesn't so there's a lot of nuances to understand about that and some players might not understand how come some commanders can have a secondary and others can and it's because of their star level so there's a lot to understand about building an army from that perspective then on top of that you add equipment and the equipment has different rarities so there's different ranks and then on top of that there's the refinement system and now there's another system on top of that which is iconic so the fact that they're layering systems on top of each other for players like me and probably you who have been playing the game for a long time it's not that big of a deal but if you're a brand new player you know the first time you open this up you're like oh my god there's four tabs up here there's so much to learn there's so much to understand and I'm a new player and I already am having trouble even getting the blueprints and equipment materials necessary to even craft something and then once I do that I have to worry about refining it and iconicing it and all this other stuff so I think that's a con right I think it's a con uh, and the main reason that that's a con is because we don't really know why the developers are doing this like what what made them think that they should add a new system to the equipment system right like I don't really understand that and what was the need for that to be the case like I to, to me I think the reason that they implemented this is because it's a system that whales will have to slowly progress towards and that will keep them engaged for longer because they can't just buy their way there so it'll keep give them a reason to keep logging in right I think that's that's one of them I don't know I wish they would tell us what their thought process was behind implementing this system and why they think that making the equipment system more complicated is ultimately better for the game and again I'm not saying that the, that the iconic system is bad in fact I think it's generally better for the game it's just more complicated which is like bad for new players finally I think the last bad thing about the iconic system is that you can't undo it like there's no like you can 
can't if you mess up right like let's say you're a new player and you you don't watch this video and you make a piece of equipment iconic that you don't that's not very good right so for example i actually think that the van braces are probably one of the last things that i'm going to make iconic because it gives me infantry based attack and i'm not that interested in that right uh and you know if you make a piece of equipment iconic you can't undo it so you know these crystals you can't buy them so they're really you know in theory they'll be relatively rare and if you sort of a quote unquote waste one on a piece of equipment that's not great there's nothing that you can do about it you can't dismantle it if you dismantle it it's gone right so um that's one thing that I'm I'm usually just generally not a huge fan of systems that don't give you that wiggle room which is one of the reasons why I hate the fact that you can't choose which skills get upgraded on a commander right like this 5255 Guan I hate the fact that I was forced basically to have a skill point here I don't want a skill point here right so you know systems that you can't really undo or you're really restricted in a certain way I think it's generally worse for the player experience but that's just my opinion uh and honestly it's not the end of the world if you put an iconic uh, crystal into a piece that's not the best because at the end of the day it's still a legendary piece of equipment and you're probably not going to dismantle it anyway so again this isn't a huge con to the system uh from what I can see but it's day one and I just want to give you guys all my thoughts and opinions now with all that being said again I do think that the iconic system is generally good for the game I, I you know until we see a huge red flag um I think in general this is good and you know we have to give Lilith and the developers credit where credit is due this system doesn't appear to be super pay to win uh so that's great right you can't buy these uh, crystals with dollars and that is what I'm all about so at the end of the day this is probably going to be a good system over the long run which is exciting I like that I'm happy to see that now with that being said what is the best way to use your iconic crystals right that's going to be the number one question for players who are seeing this system for the first time because they know that they can't just buy these crystals right it's not going to be easy to obtain these so they want to get the most value out of those crystals that they can now obviously this system just came out so what I'm going to be explaining to you here is my theory and what I'm going to be doing for my own account and for me based on my knowledge of the game and obviously over time as things get tested you know perhaps we'll have to go back and revisit this video and give you more updated uh tips for this system however for me the first things that should be in my opinion uh focus on from an iconic perspective is probably your pieces that have uh, a special talent that also give you a piece of uh, or a stat point that you really care about so for example if my van braces were special talented I probably still wouldn't focus on this one first even though you know using that crystal here would give me four stats versus here it would give me three this is base defense which I care a little bit more about as an infantry player now that is going to be up to you to decide if you want to focus on your talented items or not but again technically you will get more stats by making a piece of equipment iconic that is already talented so like you literally get more for the same amount of input so if you have talented pieces that will raise the base stats of an attribute that you care about those would be the ones that I would uh, focus on so for me these two hope cloaks are going to be great uh to put iconic status onto because I'm going to get four infantry defense points which is gonna be great besides that uh if let's say you have no special talented um legendary pieces of equipment at all uh then I would focus on your accessories I think the accessories are going to be the best value for you for two reasons one uh, you're always going to use accessories these accessories are extremely powerful in rise of kingdoms and two all of the accessories in the game that are legendary are going to give you troop base health which is the most premium and best attribute to be gaining points in it's just it's the best right on top of that this is actually not troop specific so no matter what army has this accessory those units are going to get three extra health points so if you look at any of my other pieces of equipment you know this is all infantry equipment so obviously that you know it makes sense that it would give you infantry stats um but for the for the accessories it doesn't matter you could put it on any army and you'll still get that benefit which makes them very flexible and let's say you know right now if your best army is uh you know has Nevsky in it and so you're primarily focused on uh, cavalry and then you know in a few weeks when you finally get CPO in the game and you want to focus all in on infantry now well 
the fact that you have a, a an iconic accessory doesn't change anything you're not losing that value because you're still going to be using those accessories no matter what and again it gives you base health which is awesome i love to see that that's the most premium attribute besides that um i would then focus on the piece of equipment that give you base health right so first it would be talented legendaries that give you attributes you care about and want after that it would be the accessories and then finally i would focus on the pieces that just give you health for the troop type that you care the most about so for me uh it's going to be the legs uh and the boots right so if you take a look here um all of the legs will give you health which is awesome and all of the boots will also give you health so that's all really good stuff to know um those are going to be the ones that i would focus mostly on after the other ones that we've talked about already gloves and weapons will always give attack base attributes so those are probably the ones that i would pers like personally i would focus on those last but again that's just me and of course if you have a talent in those that might be different for you so that's something that you can decide anyway guys that's pretty much everything for the iconic system uh the last thing to note is that when you see the artisans forge event go live for you you should do all of these you should do every single one of these because it's going to be a big deal if everyone on the battlefield has iconic equipment and you don't so this is going to be very important to do every time that it comes around so make sure you do it don't get lazy okay do what you got to do log in and do this stuff it's important guys with all that being said if you enjoyed the video and you made it this far drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton also if you're new here go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video even if you think you're subbed go ahead and just double check i think a lot of you guys probably aren't and you think you are because my videos come up and recommended but it does really help if you guys sub to the channel comment down below your thoughts and opinions on the iconic equipment system do you think this is generally good or generally bad for the game i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below with that being said Thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.